Hello YouTube, this is Jay, and in this video I'll be explaining every single feature in my turtle tank that enables me to make it a no water change tank. So basically for three, three years I have never did a water change, and the water quality is fine. And that is not achievable if you build a conventional aquarium. So today I'll be showing you um, and explaining with these pictures everything that is in my tank that makes me able to do a no water change system. So this is an overview of a tank. This is what it looks like. And basically I have two compartments here. This is where the turtles live. This is the turtle compartment. And this is the filter compartment. You can call it a sump. You can call it a refugium. You can just call it a huge biological filter. This is where the magic happens. And over here, this is a 120 liter. That's about 31 gallons. And that is where two southern painted turtles live and they have a little drift piece of driftwood uh, for basking and the 60 watt spot lamp um, for um, basking as well and this is where the water starts I have a 10 watt power head it is a local Korean brand called Hyopsin um, you probably never heard of them but anyways this is rated for about 15 liters per minute and that is going to pump the water into the filter compartment and when it's done I have built a overflow box here and the water will overflow black back into the turtle tank. So this co compartment is slightly elevated so the water will pump into here, get filtered and go back. And in this compartment I have several features that um, enable this tank to be no water change. So first the water flows through here and it gets mechanically filtered over here. And then I have a very thick substrate and a whole bunch of plants in here. And this thing is mostly powered in terms of light for the plants by sunlight. I just have one 3 watt um, LED lamp just for supplemental light. It's not the main light fixture, but that is what it looks like. So what's um, really important is this compartment. So let's take a closer look at that. So this is a basic um, diagram of what my filter compartment looks like. So this is a 75 liter tub. It's a plastic tub and it is separated by this uh, little plastic sheet over here so about two-thirds of the back area is um, sectioned off by this plastic um, piece here this board so the water comes in over here it flows through the rain bar and this is a little plastic box here this box and this contains the mechanical filtration that's just going to get rid of all the muck and goo that is in the water so what this compartment is filled, it's filled with three things. It has a coarse sponge and a fine filter floss and a fine sponge. So it is in three different layers. So as the water flows through the coarse sponge and the filter floss and the fine sponge, um, all the particulate matter in the water will get filtered out. So at that point, you just have the dissolved matter, the dissolved toxins. So I have a box with just sponges and filter floss here. And my maintenance basically means I take these guys out and wash them every month so I can get rid of the particulates. And the water flows down through this compartment and into the back area. The back area is filled with just a whole bunch of gravel and substrate material. And the water flows through this direction and then it comes out through this mesh here. This area is not completely blocked off with um, a solid piece of plastic. I have a plastic mesh here so the water and flow through here and then it gets treated by two components here the deep substrate and the plants and then it overflows back into the turtle tank so basically what's going on here is there's this huge back area here where the water has to flow through that is filled with substrate and the main area itself is filled with a thick substrate this is about 15 centimeters um, that is about um, five inches so I have a very thick substrate that is much thicker than what you would normally have in a conventional aquarium this thick substrate creates anoxic conditions that mean um, some people call it anaerobic anoxic mm, slightly different technically anoxic is more correct but what happens here is denitrification so thick substrate can cause anoxic conditions and that means the bacteria in there will use nitrate to breathe and that will get rid of the nitrate and the nitrate 
uh, will be converted into nitrogen gas. So nitrogen gas is going to leave the tank. And notice I have a whole bunch of plants in here. And I have multiple species of plants. I have Elodea, I have Dwarf Sagittaria, I have Hornwort, I have a duckweed, I have large, about 20 pieces of large water bamboo, and all of these plants are going to suck up the nutrients, the polluted water. They're going to suck up all of that. That is the nutrients for the plants. And these plants, as they grow, the polluted substance that is in the water, whether it be nitrates, ammonia, phosphates, whatever, that becomes incorporated into the plant tissue. So the plants filter water by removing the stuff in the water and just stocking it up into their own tissue. So it's not in the water anymore, it is inside the plants. So when the plants grow, the population grows, I'll periodically trim the plants off, I'll remove them. And so another output comes out in terms of plant tissue. So plants are basically just little machines that take out the polluted substance in the water and just stockpile it within their tissue and you can remove the plants instead of removing the water. Okay? So that is kind of what this compartment looks like. I have a thick substrate, mechanical filtration here, and the substrate it is composed of a variety of materials. Um, the actual components don't really matter. How I ended up with this is because I experimented with a whole a bunch of different substrates. So I ended up getting them all mixed up um, over the years of experimentation. So it is mostly fine gravel. I have some sand mixed in and I have two sort of bonsai substrates. I have stuff called Hugo soil and Akadama soil. Probably never heard of these. This is just something I experimented with. You don't have to use these. I just have it in there because they got mixed in. But basically, this is what compo uh, what my substrate is made of. So it fills up this entire bottom area um, with about 15 centimeters of thickness, and then this entire back compartment is just filled with the substrate. And the substrate is planted in this section with the water bamboo. And I just have a small three watt um, LED lamp here for supplemental light. Um, this system basically also relies on plants and the plants need energy to work. Plants don't just exist in the water and that doesn't just filter filter a tank. The plants have to grow and incor incorporate all the phosphates and nitrates in the water and for that they need energy and that energy for my system comes mostly from the sun. So this tank receives about uh, four to five hours of sunlight a day. So that sunlight is what powers this system partially. So that is what the filter compartment looks like. And now let us look at the inhabitants of this tank. So basically, this is my turtle compartment, what's in there, and this is my um, filter compartment and what lives in there. So basically, the main um, creatures of this aquarium, the dominant organism, are these two southern painted turtles. They are the main guys. They are the ones that are going to uh, chomp on the food and then produce the waste. So, and then in here, I have some cherry shrimp that have migrated from this compartment. I initially did not have them in there. And they just jumped over from the overflow. And now they, I have a stable population of cherry shrimp intermingled with the turtles. And of course, due to the sunlight coming in, I have quite a bit of algae growing in the turtle compartment as well. As for the filter compartment, I have multiple species of plants. I have dwarf Sagittaria, I have Elodea, I have duckweed, I have foxtail, and of course I have the 20 huge water bamboos growing. I have red cherry shrimp and red ram's horn snails. I also uh, see a couple other species of snails which I have not really identified as the species. They are a native species that have just uh, developed. They probably hitchhiked from the plants and substrate that I have important. But anyways, the main guys are the red branch horn snails. So um, obviously the plants contribute in terms of um, producing that plant biomass, removing that uh, waste from the water and incorporating it into the tissue. And they are powered by sunlight. And what these cherry shrimp and ram's horn snails do is basically they reduce my need for feeding. And if you want to know exactly how that works, you can watch my other videos. But basically, these guys and these guys over here are going to eat up the turtle food that the turtles haven't quite gotten to yet. 
the turtle uh the turtles will munch on the food and some of them some of the food they will spill and these guys are going to salvage it and again these guys can be eaten by the turtles in return so these guys are fed by the remnant turtle food and the algae these guys are going to eat the algae and that and that is just going to salvage some of that energy back to the turtles and in terms of duckweed and elodea the turtles will also eat these plants so if I just left these plants intermingled with the turtles they will all get eaten up so I have them separated in this filter compartment and every week or so I will trim some of these plants I'll scoop them out I'll throw some of them out and for the LED and duckweed like the rest of the plants I'll just trim off but the LED and duckweed the turtles can eat so I will scoop that just back in the turtle compartment and the turtles will eat that well how does this ecosystem help? well it helps by reducing the feeding so ecosystems reduce the feeding requirement so there's less food going in that means it is vastly easier to maintain as a no water change tank that vastly reduces the need for filtration again if you want to understand how that works you're gonna to have to watch my other videos I'm just explaining all the features in the tank that make it work so basically I have a deep substrate it is about 15 centimeters in thickness of a variety of different materials mostly fine gravel and that creates an oxic zone which in turn can create denitrification so the bulk of the filtration issue is the nitrates that build up that is what uh, usually necessitates a water change and basically most of that nitrogen can be gotten rid of by just a deep substrate and that nitrogen is going to leave the system in terms of um, nitrogen gas the second thing is um, plant growth so the plants grow and they incorporate the nitrates and the phosphates and all the um, excess materials and minerals that are building up in the water and that thing is powered by the sunlight so sunlight is going to provide the energy for plant growth and the plant growth is going to remove all of those things from the water and eventually instead of removing the dirty water I can just remove some of the plants and that results in filtration and then the final feature is I have built an ecosystem where I have shrimp and uh, snails and plants that are just getting consumed by the apex predator which is the turtles and because I have these closed loop systems within the tank I have to rely less on exogenous feeding basically I can have less food going in and the most important thing about having a no water chain system is creating that output so what goes in is the food and something has to come out of there something has to come out and that is usually in a conventional tank you just that output is dirty water you're constantly pumping out the dirty water so the water is going out and the food is going in and you have to balance these out and what an ecosystem does is because of these closed loops because I can salvage and recycle the energy within the tank by um, feeding the turtles the, the shrimp and the ram's horn snails that means I can have less input going in so that means I don't have to have that much of an output so that is what um, how this ecosystem helps so that ecosystem results in minimal feeding so that is an overlook of all the features that make this turtle tank a uh, no water change tank that is what enabled me to create this tank and maintain it no water change style for uh, several years and um, if you want to understand every single um, principle and science behind this you can watch my no water change series I explain everything in uh, deep detail so you can have an understanding of how the system works and there are this is not the only way you can build it there are alternative ways which I discuss in my other videos so you can go and watch those so this was just a rundown of every single feature that is within my turtle tank that enables me to have a no water change system so thanks for watching guys.